What I wanted to talk about this week is burnout. It's a topic that has received a lot of attention. It's a topic that's near and dear to my own heart. Uh, I come from the medical world, and anybody who has been following that, you know that the medical world is suffering from an incredible amount of burnout, uh, both among doctors and nurses and, and other professionals. Although it is not unique to the medical world, uh, I think, if anything, it, 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 burnout in the medical world doesn't just affect the people that are involved, right? the people that are suffering from burnout, but it also uh, really affects other people. And, and I'm not talking about the companies that we work for, the hospital systems that we work for, the medical systems, uh, or even the insurance companies, right? It, it affects patients. It affects the people that are coming to our medical world for help, right? That specifically need help, uh, that are coming with uh, specific problems that they, on their own, are not able to solve. And so, Burnout is something that in the medical world that I think has an incredible amount of, of uh, impact on our society, uh, especially considering, uh, you know, our aging population. Uh, we have more people that are older, that are sicker, and then we have fewer people who are out there taking care of all these people. And uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, just the way our medical system is run internally. Uh, and I think uh, most people know about that, but uh, there is also a lot of uh, uh, burnout that is that is people are suffering from, and, and myself included, that uh, is driving people away from medicine. And so, like I said, it's a topic that is really near and dear to my own heart. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that today, uh, talk about what it is and what we can do to maybe alleviate the symptoms. Uh, maybe even avoid or, or, or restructure our burnout in a way that we can continue to give back uh, to our community. Welcome everyone who is here. Thank you for joining. I uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, the Sunday Setup for Success happens every Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, unless I'm out of town or something, but uh, it'll be on the calendar. It'll be on the events. All right, so what what is burnout? Uh, so uh, I was just looking up this uh, definition today by the uh, American uh, Psycho Psychological Association. Uh, the burnout by them is defined as physical, emotional, or mental exhaustion accompanied by decreased motivation, lowered performance, and negative attitudes towards oneself and others. Uh, now, it is also important to notice that it is not actually a medical condition in and of itself. It is not a diagnosis that any physician or uh, therapist can make. And if you really look at the, the definition a little bit more clearly, uh, I think it follows onto a depressive spectrum, uh, a, you know, with uh, exhaustion, right? Emotional and mental exhaustion, decreased motivation. Uh, th that really sounds like depression, doesn't it? Um, the important part about burnout, though, is that it doesn't just affect oneself, it also affects others. So how you work as a result of burnout if directly and indirectly affects others. Um, so in the medical world, that could be your co-workers, right? So if you're burned out, you're not interacting well with others, and also, obviously, the patients themselves. So it is a little bit on the depressive spectrum, and so uh, part of that is going to be, uh, I think, in terms of the treatment for it, has to be uh, has to be considered um, for how do we deal with depression even uh, in today's society. If you, you know, how do you know that you're suffering from burnout? So burnout is is definitely something that is unique to every individual, right? The symptoms are different, uh, the the feelings are different, the emotions are different, the the triggering. The triggering events are different. The situations that bring burnout uh, uh, to the forefront are different for every individual. So in that sense, burnout is a little bit like cancer, right? Every cancer is different. And even if we're talking about things like breast cancer or colon cancer, even then there's genetic variability and, and each cancer is going to be different and behaving differently for each individual person. So burnout is the, is the same way. It's, it's, it's a generic uh, topic that affects everyone individually 
differently. Uh, and so what burnout means to you is something that uh, probably different than what burnout means to me and, and what I feel and how I see it and what triggers it. Um, but some of the, the common symptoms uh, that are described, uh, and you can find this online with, with a very simple web search, uh, a sense of failure and self-doubt. Okay, so if you think about uh, if you think about that already, right? A sense of failure and self doubt. You you are feeling like you're not worth it. You're feeling you're not bringing enough to the table. Now that's of course a vicious cycle here because the feeling of sense of failure and self doubt comes from your work, right? But probably the, the, you're getting burned out from your work because you, you're not you're not feeling um, a purpose. You're not aligned with your purpose, which is why you're feeling that sense of failure and self-doubt. So the sense of failure and self-doubt is both uh, almost a, an initiating event to the burnout. It's also a symptom of burnout. And so it's it's this vicious cycle. It's a self-perpetuating cycle, uh, if you just think about it uh, from, from that uh, symptom alone. Uh, it's a feeling of helplessness, feeling trapped and defeated, um, right? So, and I think a lot of that has to do with, if you're really looking at the people that suffer burnout, it's the people that are in some kind of employed situation, people that are that are working for someone else. If you're working only for yourself, if you're truly aligned with your purpose, if you're pursuing your purpose, it, I, I think it's almost impossible to suffer burnout. Now, you could feel stress, you could feel exhaustion, but true burnout doesn't come from you being able to pursue your purpose. Now, it may come if you're in a situation like, like us in the medical world where you're pursuing some kind of purpose, but you're not able to do it in the way that you want to because you're employed and you have uh, you know, responsibilities to your employer of how your job is going to get done. And, and that's, that's I think, uh, also a big, uh, a big reason that burnout is being suffered in the medical world because the people that are really at the front line, those frontline medical workers, have a very different idea of how medicine is supposed to be done versus the people that are running the medical systems, the insurance companies, uh, and so uh, th there's a misalignment between what should be done, what we feel should be done, what's in the best interest of the patient, and then what is in the best interest for the corporations that we're working for. And so, again, feeling helplessness, trapped, and defeated. feels a bit like uh, depression, doesn't it? Um, detachment, feeling alone in the world. Again, very, very much on the, on the depressive uh, spectrum, right? Being detached, not just maybe from your work. That's a big thing, but also from yourself and from your community because you're feeling alone in the world. You're not able to connect with others. Uh, a loss of motivation, right? I mean, that that is really, uh, I think, the big thing, a loss of motivation to really go do what you're supposed to be doing because you don't want to do it anymore, right? But why do you not want to do it anymore, right? That's 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 the triggering event that's going to be different for uh, for everybody. But because of that loss of motivation, because you there is self-doubt, because you're feeling alone, because you're feeling helpless, because you're feeling trapped, what happens? Our negative, our our our, our default negative mindset comes to the mind, comes to the forefront, right? And we become cynical, and we have that negative outlook. We have that negative mindset, which is, you know, if you really look at it, that negative mindset that we all default to, you know, ten thousand years ago served a biological purpose. That was a survival mechanism. So there's a reason we we have this default negative mindset because we needed to survive in a very dangerous world. But that's not the world we live in anymore, right? We have we're very safe and secure, especially in the developed world. We don't need to default to that negative mindset anymore. But a triggering event can bring it back to the forefront very easily because that is our biological default. Um, what else? Decreased satisfaction and the decreased sense of accomplishment, right? I mean, that's a big thing. Decreased satisfaction, decreased sense of accomplishment. Again, and this is where I'm coming from, is if you're truly pursuing your purpose, if you're truly pursuing your purpose, then you shouldn't have any decreased satisfaction. You shouldn't feel you shouldn't feel less accomplished, right? If you're not getting to where you want to go, you just have to change your uh, your approach, right? If you're not satisfied with the results, but you're still pursuing purpose, well, then you're just changing your, your approach in order to get the satisfaction that you're seeking. Uh, but with burnout, that's impossible. That, 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 does, not, uh, that does not happen. Um, some of the other things that I found uh, that are listed uh, online, and again, you know, reading these, I think is is very much in line with with depression. And so I, I think um, one of the big things I want to point out, uh, for one, because it's Mental Health Awareness Month, but but also because I I myself um, have been suffering from depression, is you if if you truly have depression and not burnout, you need help. 
And there's plenty of ways that we know how to treat depression, um, but burnout is a little different. Burnout is not a diagnosis, right? So burnout is something that technically we can't treat. So we all got to figure out how to how to do this. But I do think burnout falls onto the depressive spectrum, uh, and it may just be a, a short duration of depression, whereas depression is a chronic condition. Burnout is sort of this acute sensation, a short-lived duration, hopefully, as long as you're able to get out of your current situation into something different, into something where you're truly pursuing purpose, you should be able to get out of that that rut, out of that out of that burned out feeling. Um, so uh, what I found here is uh, you may be on the road to burnout if every day is a bad day. Now I think you know that may be a little bit to an extreme. It may just be Monday through Friday or whatever days you work are bad days, right? You may be very much looking forward to the weekend because those are the days you don't have to work and you don't have to subject yourself to all the triggers that are triggering your burnout. Um, caring about your work or home life seems like a total waste of energy. Well, so, you know, home versus work, I mean, that really depends on what, what you're burned out about. Right, that really depends on what you're burned out about. A lot of times, you talk about burnout really in the work setting. There are things uh, or situations where people are burned out at home. Right, uh, they're not having meaningful connections with uh, with the relationships in their lives. Uh, they're stressed out and overwhelmed with uh, maybe maybe the children in their household. Um, obviously, work life translates very frequently into home life because your home schedule frequently is is adjusted based on your work schedule, uh, and so there's some overlap there. But for the most part, we're you know generally talking about burnout. In in a work setting, really not in a home setting, but there are there are people who can who can suffer from burnout from things that are at home, and I I've definitely crossed paths with these people, and so I think that is a possibility. Um, it's just not something that we routinely talk about uh, when it comes to burnout. Um, the majority of your day is spent on tasks you find either mind-numbingly dull or overwhelming, and, and I, that I absolutely agree with. Right, you, you're doing things that aren't your passion. You're doing things that aren't aligned with your purpose, and so you're doing things just because you have to do them. But you don't get any satisfaction out of it. You're not getting any reward out of it. There's no positive emotion tied to these to these uh, tasks that you're doing every day, and that is what's causing the burnout. Right? There's there's no there's no meaning to your work. Right? There's no sense of accomplishment. You're just doing things because you're doing things. You're not doing things because you want to do things or there's a mission, there's a purpose, right? Uh, so again, I, I think if, if you're truly aligned with your purpose, you're not going to suffer from burnout. Uh, you feel like nothing you do makes a difference or is appreciated. Now that, that is actually something that can cause burnout. I wouldn't say that that is necessarily a symptom of, of burnout, but but that is definitely something that can cause burnout. We know that, right? If people are not appreciated for the work that they do, they do suffer burnout because their work just becomes mind-numbingly dumb, right? They're like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And so, yeah, uh, nothing you do makes a difference or you don't feel appreciated for what you do is actually a cause of burnout more so than a symptom of burnout. Uh, but so those are some of the things that you find online if you, if you if you just do a web search for for what is burnout and what are the symptoms of burnout out or or do I have burnout? Uh, so those are good things to do if, if you're not sure for yourself whether you are burned out. Uh, you know, I, I think in general, if, if you have to ask the question, the chances that you are is probably pretty high. Uh, but if you're not sure, uh, good starting points. Now, where do we go? What do we do about this? Well, the first thing we have to again realize is that burnout is different for everyone. Okay. Again, uh, your experience with burnout is going to be different than my experience with burnout because we have different uh, different experiences that led us to where we are today, uh, and our different experiences lead to different expectations of, of how things should be. And not meeting those expectations, uh, and then also not aligning with purpose, is then what causes the symptoms of burnout. So everybody experiences that differently. There's different uh, there's different causes for everybody. There's also different symptoms for everybody. So what we feel about uh, about our work or our disconnect with whatever it is that is causing our burnout uh, is going to be uh, symptomatically different because we're all different human beings. We have different emotions. We have different experiences. We have, we have different people, right? And, and so that is um, uh, that is important to recognize is that just because we say someone has burnout doesn't mean the same thing for every person. Um, and, and so it's definitely a spectrum uh, of both both uh, causes, a much bigger spectrum than, than, than even the symptoms. Uh, but the symptoms do fall on the depressive spectrum. Now, with that in mind, and because these these symptoms fall on the depressive spectrum, right, on a negative mindset, um, and you you know, mindset is important to me. So what, we, what we've been doing so far in the last few years is focusing on the positive, right? Trying to focus more on a positive mindset. How can we rearrange your thinking into something more positive, more beneficial? Get you back in there, right? So the 
the, the only problem with that is we, we've almost gone too far, right? This, this just be positive attitude that we're doing here right now um, uh, is almost a little bit toxic because it is, it is ignoring uh, it really it is ignoring the negative emotions that we do feel. It is invalidating our negative emotions. And it's okay to have negative emotions. We're all humans. We're supposed to have a spectrum of emotions. And so just focusing on the positive is actually not the answer, right? So if you think about it, uh, all these pizza parties that we get at work, right? That's great. So you fed us lunch. Uh, you know, my belly's full. I'm feeling good about that. But what you have done is you've completely avoided me feeling poorly about what I'm doing the rest of the 8 or 10 or 12 hours that I'm at work. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I get a good positive reaction in my belly here for 10 minutes. But then the rest of the day is, is going to be different because what we're doing is we're trying to slap a Band-Aid on it because it's cheap. Right. And we think it's effective. But we're trying to think that just thinking positive is the answer. But it's not. Now, thinking positive is important. Right. But it is not. Uh, but we cannot ignore the negative emotions that are tied to burnout. We cannot ignore those. We cannot ignore the symptoms, right? We're human beings. We have feelings. We have emotions. And, and, and ignoring the ones that we're feeling, right, invalidating or, or, or rather not validating our negative feelings actually works against you in that sense. And so the, the just being positive attitude that we've been that we've been trialing so far really is toxic and it's the wrong approach um, because we, we do have negative emotions and we should not ignore them. We should we should validate them. Um, but where does this really come from? Right. It comes from uh, I've been thinking about this for, for a little bit. It comes from this idea of uh, almost like the American dream. Right. Just just work hard. Just get in there. Just work hard and you'll be successful and you'll make a you'll, you'll build a life for yourself. Um, it's about individualizing people. Right. About this toxic individualization individuality, right? Don't trust your neighbor. Don't trust the person in the cubicle next to you because uh, they're only out for themselves. They're not out for the good of the company, but you, you are, right? So it's this toxic individuality uh, that, it, that, is, uh, that is feeding some of all of this as well, right? Because it's, it's that ultimately what then leads to our toxic positivity, uh, trying to just say, hey, you're doing great. Um, uh, what you doing here? Have some pizza, right? Um, so, it, and it's also, remember that one of the symptoms was this feeling of being alone, and so this toxic individuality, which drives us apart, is also part of the reason we're having burnout, because we're not meant to live in this world alone, right? We're human beings. We're a communal species. We, we thrive on connectivity, right? We're better. We're stronger when we're together. And we know that, right? If you think about it, any large business has hundreds and thousands of people working for them. Why? Because the business as a whole is better with all these people, right? Uh, it's it's not, if, if one person could do all their jobs and, and be just successful, then that person should be doing all the jobs. So you could see in, in the business world alone, right? We, we are, we're better together, right? So um, the, the thing to keep in mind, this is, this is some uh, a very interesting uh, approach too, is uh, when, when you're looking at this, it, you, you don't want to invalidate or, or not validate the negative emotions. You do want to do that. You want to address them. You want to want to acknowledge them. But you also want to bring some positivity into the mix. Uh, and, and what you want to have is a mindset of positivity. And this was uh, this is really popularized by uh, Barbara Fredrickson uh, in, in her three to one rule. You really want to have three times as many positive emotions as you have negative emotions. That's really where you thrive. Most people live in the one to two to one ratio. Uh, and, and probably on the burnout side, you're probably very much on the lower end of that spectrum. But if you can drive your positive emotion to negative emotion ratio over two and towards the three or even greater mark, that's where thriving happens. And so what is that mindset of positivity? Well, there, there's a few uh, components to that uh, that are important. So how, how do we come, how, how do we get that positive mindset, right? So for one is we have to be open, right? We have to be open and, and accepting of new ideas, uh, new mindsets, uh, new thought patterns, right? We have to be open and receptive to new ideas. Uh, with that also comes on, we have to be curious about new ideas, right? We have to be willing to chase and, and pursue new ideas. Uh, because if we're not, uh, then we're just going to be stuck right here. Right? If, if, and obviously, when we're stuck right here, nothing is going to change. And so the only way to change is to do something different, right? So we have to be open to new ideas, and we have to be curious about it uh, in order to, to reach out and, and find something new, something different. We have to be appreciative. We not only have to be appreciative of some of these new ideas, but another important component of this is gratitude for what we have. We have to be appreciative for the things that we have. Now, of course, our negative mindset is going to say, well, all of this is not good, right? This is, this is what got us here, and this is why it's bad. Um, but, you know, in any 
bad situation, there is always going to be just a little bit, a tiny little glimpse of something positive. And if we can be curious enough to even introspect ourselves and look at our current situation, however terrible it is, and find that one little thing that is positive, that already drives up our, our positive to negative emotions ratio uh, a little bit. Um, and again, it's it's also uh, with all that, right? We have to be open to new ideas from other people. Again, we're communal species. We are not meant to be live in this world alone. We're, we're trying to do this with other people. And so we have to be kind to other people, right? Uh, you know, you have to be able to connect with other people. The only way to connect with other people is to be kind to others. The other component of that is, of course, uh, you have to recognize that you may not be the only person who's suffering from burnout. The person next to you might just as well be. And so you have to be kind and realize that these, these other people in your life also have struggles. They also have challenges. And so being kind with them helps them get through their struggles and their challenges. And, and you're in that, in that sense, you're helping support them. You're uplifting them, right? And that's what I always say when I say, be good, do good, right? And this is be kind to your other beings around you, your other humans around you, your, whether those are your friends, your co-workers, your family, right? You want to be kind to them because they too have struggles and you may not be fully aware of everything that they're going through in their own lives. And then finally, be real. Be real. Being fake uh, doesn't help anybody, right? You want to connect with people on, on a real basis. Uh, we're human beings. We're, we're, that's what we're meant to do. We're not meant to look, look on Instagram and look at filters of pictures, right? We're meant to be in person with other people, right? Flesh on flesh, being in the same room, right? As, as dirty and difficult as that can get, that's really where humans thrive. Okay, and when we saw that a little bit, uh, it, you know, even through the through the COVID times, right, when everything shut down and we weren't able to connect with people, right, that was terrible. So many people suffer from that because we weren't able to hang out together and work together and work through it together and being real with each other. Okay, so those those are the five components of of, an, of a positivity mindset. So being open, appreciative, curious, kind, and real. And those are all, uh, again, pioneered by Bar Barbara Fredrickson. And, and the whole idea is you want to develop a uh, an emotions ratio of positive to negative of three to one. So you want three times as many positive emotions in your life as you want negative emotions in your life uh, in order to be on that thriving side of the spectrum. Anything less than that, then you're either stagnant or you're regressing. And that's what happens with burnout, right? Your negative emotions really take over, your ratio tips in the wrong direction, and that's where we find ourselves. So I'm a very uh, practical person, a very pragmatic person. I always like to know, what can I do right now to fix this? Now, the problem here is that burnout is, again, multifactorial. It's different for everybody. The, the triggering events are different. And sometimes it's not entirely easy or possible even in this very moment to fix burnout, to avoid burnout, to get away from burnout, right? And, or, or all the triggers that are causing burnout. So there's a couple of things that we can do, though, in order to at least reframe our mindset in the moment to hopefully get ourselves a little bit of a buffer, a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of an ability to think differently about the situation and find a way out. Okay, so the, the first thing is is just a feeling of gratitude for what you have. Okay, even if you're not where you want to be, you can find something positive just to start reframing your mind and start bringing up that positive side of the emotion scale a little bit. Uh, again, however small it is, find something in your life that you can be grateful for. And it can be as simple as, something as, simple as saying, you know what? I have running water in my house. I mean, how many millions of people in the world don't have running water in their homes, right? It could be something so simple. You get up in the morning, you could shower with hot water, right? How many people in the world cannot do that? So having some feeling of gratitude can shift your positive to negative emotions uh, ratio uh, already in a good direction. Now, it's not going to tip the scale, but it's going to start the process. The other component of that, you know, gratitude is really looking at, at, at very specific individual things. Um, but, but the other important thing is just to savor what is good, okay? So it's not just, uh, it's not just, feeling gratitude for what you have, but in that moment that you're in right now, savoring the good stuff, okay? Whatever little that is, just look around you right now, take 10, 20 seconds, and find something 
that is good and just look at it and take it in and truly feel it, right? And the word savor, you think about it, it really comes from food, the taste you get, the texture you get, the smell you get. And that's really what I want you to do here is really savor that moment, savor that thing that you're not just feeling grateful for, but, but that is actually good in your life. And really take it in. What does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? Um, to really get a get a positive emotion going in the moment. Now, these are all band-aids. None of these uh, actually uh, will fix burnout because really those things are again akin to the to the pizza party, right? You can feel gratitude, you, know, you can feel gracious for uh, your your manager or your boss uh, buying you the pizza. Uh, that day for lunch, right? You can savor that pizza. You can take in the smell and, and the taste and the texture, and you, you can really get a good sense of positivity from that, but that's not going to be lasting, right? What we really need to do, uh, in the more durable interventions are what I call the four Ps. Okay, there's four Ps um, that will fix burnout. Uh, and they're all very simple, uh, and they're all things that I've talked about, and I will continue to talk about. And so the first P is purpose, right? You have to find your purpose in life, and you have to align your life with it. If you're not on the path to pursuing purpose, you're out there floating in the ether, you're, you're going to get burned out because you don't know what it is that you're chasing in life. You don't know what your goals are. You don't know what your desires are. You don't. You, you may have. You may have some dreams and 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 and, and some ideas of where you want to go, but you don't have a plan, right? You, you, so you need a purpose. You need to know what your purpose is so you can start aligning your life with that. And and this is of course something where, where coaches can come in to help you find purpose and then align yourself with that purpose. Um, the next P is priming. Okay, so what you want to do is once you find your purpose, you think about you, know, you, you do this future focus. You think about where you're going to be a year from now, right? And you get your mind primed on what your life is going to look like. It's going to look better, right? Because you're going to be aligned with your purpose. You're going to be pursuing purpose, and you're going to be in a much better uh, heading in a, heading in a much better direction. And you're priming your brain to think about that. Okay, and that triggers positive emotions. And by triggering more positive emotions, we're driving up the ratio now of more positive to negative emotions, which works in our favor. Okay, so purpose is the first one. Priming your mind to know what the future will hold is the second. The next one then is planning. How do you get from where you are today to where you're going to be in the future, right? You've primed your mind. You know you know what your purpose is. You've got yourself aligned. You primed your mind to know where it is that you're going to go. Now you've got a plan on how to get from here to there. Right, so that's the third P, planning. And the fourth P is quite simply physical activity. Okay, we know, and we've known this for ages and ages and ages, that physical activity, exercise really is at the core of health. And we have just taken that idea and thrown it out the window. Okay, physical activity is at the core of everything. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a, is a fantastic guy when it comes to mindset, and he will always say it always starts in the gym for him. Whenever he has a down day, he goes to the gym and he pumps some weights, right? So physical activity, exercise is important in order to be in good health. And this is actually, I think, uh, one of my one of my pet peeves when it comes to the corporate world. Now, when I was in the military, we had a dedicated exercise time every day, right? If I said, look, I need to go run, I went to go run, right? I'm like, I'm going to the gym. I got an hour to go to the gym. Uh, and, and we had dedicated, we had protected time for our physical activity. Not just because there were, you know, the military was, you know, required that of us, the physical standards that we had to meet and we had to, we had to test, uh, you know, uh, every year on those. But because, of, and it, you know, obviously that's important for the fighting force, but it also has, as an indirect effect, we know that if you are in, in good physical health, your, uh, your overall, Health, right? If you if you if you're physically fit, your overall health can be much improved. And by improving your overall health, what does that do? It drives down the cost of healthcare. Military is a big organization. Healthcare is a big expense. So there is that sort of indirect effect of if you have a fit fighting force, you're driving down the cost of healthcare, right? And you all know right now the government is fighting for it with a debt ceiling again. And how do we how do we uh, you know fund everything? And so uh, you know from from a pure pragmatic approach again, right? The government wants people healthy at least. You you know, the, the, the people that are working for the government, they want them healthy because it drives down their, their health care costs, right? But for you, in a, in, a, in a more practical sense, having good physical health translates to good mental health. It translates to better resilience in stressful situations, those situations that can trigger and cause burnout. 
So yes, physical activity is that fourth B, and it's so, so, so important. And you don't have to do much. We know, we know, we have data on this that, that shows that really just one hour of intense physical exercise per week, one hour per week, really 10 minutes per day of intense exercise, which really just means you're getting your heart rate up on a very basic level. But if you do 10 minutes of intense exercise where you're getting your heart rate up every day, your physical health will improve substantially. Now, if you want to go beyond that, by all means do so, and there's there's benefits that can be gained, especially if you're working towards a specific goal. Um, but that's the other thing. You got you to have a plan here, right? Just going to the gym and working on the treadmill or, or taking the Stairmaster for 10 minutes. Eh, you, okay, you're moving your body and that's great, but you really want to have a plan in place for what it is that you're actually working towards. Are you trying to decrease your blood pressure? Are you trying to uh, you know, lose some weight? Are you trying to get rid of your diabetes, right? There, there are certain things that you got to think about and, and plan for based on your body and what you're physically able, uh, able to as well. So um, those are the four Ps that will have... That are really part of the durable interventions for burnout. So again, and it, it comes down to purpose. And I, I keep saying that because it's so, so, so important. You have to find your purpose in life because purpose drives everything. And once you're aligned with your purpose and you're heading in the right direction, your burnout will melt away. You're priming your mind to know where you're going in the future. Then you're planning on how to get there. And finally, you're exercising and adding that physical activity on that so that your body is not just physically fit, but mentally fit as well.